But that means he took part in the murders. I just can't believe it. If you're having trouble, would you like me to show you one more piece of evidence? There's more? Oh, absolutely. The single biggest fact pointing to his involvement has yet to be revealed. You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The item he took off of Taka's lifeless body? Kirigiri searched the room with us, and that's how she found that, right? Am I remembering that right? I think so. She was with us when we got it, but yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I got it! You're talking about the note Kifumi had hidden away, aren't you? Uh, hidden note? That's right. We found it stuffed in his pants. What? In his pants? Mm. Yes, his pants. Okay, well, forget about the pants for now. Take a look at what the note says. You think what? if he was a real OG, he would have just ate that shit. True. Swallowed and all. Yep, found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone for now. Let's meet in the quitting room, Suzanne. That's the note I was telling you about. The one that told me where to go. Huh? Wait, this one's a little different. In my note it said, Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. I see. Then this note isn't the same one Hero got. It's not the same? In other words, the killer got in touch with another person besides Hero, and that person could only have been... I... <laughs> I got it! That's right! Taka! The killer used this note to draw out Taka and murder him. Hello! Over here! Objection! Objection! I don't really understand what's going on, but Kifumi had that letter, right? So whoever wrote it wasn't drawing out TikTok, they were drawing out Huffy! Um, just to be clear, TikTok is Taka and Huffy is Hifumi, right? Oh, yes! Why must you ruin it every time? Man, Genocide Jack is seriously scary, but still, I can't let her get to me. I don't know whether Jack's dumb or just a troll. I really don't understand. Broken wristwatch, blue tarp, if he was glasses, spot with him. Puppy had the note, right? Then the person it was intended for must have been Puppy! But remember what the note said. What time did it say to me? 6 a.m. The time doesn't matter! The note has nothing to do with TikTok! I'll keep that for now. Happy had the note right, and the person it was must have been happy. But remember what the note said. What time did it? Six a.m. I believe. The time doesn't matter. The note has nothing to do with TikTok. But remember what the note said. What time did it say to meet? 6 a.m. The time doesn't matter. The note has nothing to do with TikTok. Okay, I'm gonna assume it's the second one and just shoot on the third one. Happy had the note said, and the person it was in kept must have been happy. But remember what the note said. What time did it say? I mean, why do you think you need to do a flashback at all for this one? Because I don't the see any of matter. these things matching. Blue tarp doesn't well, make sense. Kumi's glasses then, spotless. Sir. Glasses, cleaning right? cloth, broken wristwatch. Then the person it was intended for is the only one that I can see matching. But remember which what one? What time spotless you hammer, you which only has to do with a different room than the one we're dealing with. Glasses, cleaning cloth has nothing to do with this either. The broken wrist watch doesn't say, like, she says it has nothing to do with the time. So, I'm just, like, the only one I can think of is this one right here, so I'll try shooting it. But remember what the note said. What time did it say to meet? 6 a.m., I believe. The time doesn't matter! The note has nothing to do with TikTok! Okay. No, it's wrong! I... 
Some of these are kind of like, I could shoot this one or I could shoot this. I really don't know. It's a 50 50 shot for no, me. There absolutely is a connection. What, what the even hell are you talking about? The note said to meet at 6 a.m., which is the same time Taka was murdered. We've already proven that using his wristwatch. But there's more. Look where the note says to meet. The equipment room, right? Which is where Taka was killed. I see. So, Taka was murdered at both the time and place written in the note. I think that should be plenty to show that this note was definitely meant for Taka. Hmm. Well, when you put it like that. No further objections! <laughs> Yeah, she's just and trolling. Someone used that note to trick Taka. Yeah. Just the same that's as how, me. That's how Jack do me do. The culprit really is a cold-blooded monster. Telling people they found a way out. But if they gave the note to Taka, what was Hifumi doing with it? Stuck down his pants, no less. Most likely. Hifumi stole it off Taka's corpse after he died. Huh? He stole it? Where's your proof? Go ahead. Show us. <sighs> Okay, yeah. Kiyotaka's scrap of paper. I got it! When I searched Taka's body, I saw that his lifeless hand was gripping a small scrap of paper. If I'm right about this, the sheet of paper this piece came from is... I knew it! It fits perfectly with the note we found hidden on Hifumi! Then Taka's scrap and Hifumi's note... Yup. They're from the same piece of paper. Hifumi had the note meant for Taka, while Taka's corpse still grasped a small piece of that note. There is only one way to explain it. Taka died clutching the note. Hifumi tried to free the note from his death grip, leaving behind only one small scrap. Did I get all that right? That means Hifumi knew the note was important. Exactly. Which proves that he was an accomplice in the murder. Whoa! Yeah. After seeing all this, Hifumi was super involved in this whole thing for sure. The fact that we had to get this far for Hiro to finally catch up with the rest of us. Hiro, Hiro. is a big dumbass. And I I'm, I'm to the point it. where I don't even just like hate Hiro anymore. I just I'm kind of apathetic. I just don't he's, like him. He's just dumb. In fact, he was behind yeah, the like I thing. just I wish he wasn't in here. Fact, he's still alive. Yeah. Okay, Hiro, you're just so stupid. I'm sorry. No. When we found him in the repository, Hifumi was truly and completely dead. The second body discovery announcement proves that. Didn't he come back to life for like ten, five seconds or something after that announcement? Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least we can, you know, prove that they don't have some kind of like heart monitor or something. So then, who killed Hifumi? Whoever did is the mastermind, the true killer. I wouldn't use the word mastermind because we're using that for something else right now. True killer, yeah, he sure. Was killed in the repository, so he must have been killed not long after transporting Taka's body. So he must have been killed after Taka's body vanished, but before we found both bodies in the repository. During that time, we'd all split up and were searching for Taka's missing body. In other words, during that time, none of us have alibis. Wait, but me and Sakura were together. Stop trying to steal the spotlight, you stupid walrus! Who are you calling a walrus? Anyway, when they were killed bothers me too. But there's something that's been bothering me even more. And what might that be? The weapon they used to kill Hifumi! The weapon? Yeah, because I mean... According to the Monokuma file, the way Taka and Hifumi were killed was almost the same, with them having similar fractures and all. But Justice Hammer 3 and 4 were still laying around in the nurse's office and equipment room, right? So if Hifumi was killed in the repository, the culprit would have had to grab one of the hammers, kill Hifumi, then put the hammer back where they found it. But wouldn't that be seriously risky for him? I'm surprised. It seems there's some semblance of a brain knocking around that skull of yours after all. Good job. Hell yeah, it's packed in there good and tight. He's right though. I don't understand it either. 
The Monokuma file makes it clear that they were killed using similar instruments. But if the hammers were already laying around those other rooms... So the question is, how could the culprit have gotten their hands on either of the hammers? Personally, I haven't a clue. So which hammer was used to attack Celeste? Number one or number two? Those were accounted for in other rooms, too. And I don't think either one is big enough to kill someone. Um... Then... Uh... Is it not possible they used a different weapon? I don't think it is possible. They were both killed with the same kind of thing, right? So then, what was used to kill Hifumi? Soccer just completely ignores hero statement. <laughs> As everyone the whole picture surrounding the case won't become clear until we figure that out. Somehow, I have to find the truth. I just have to. It's so hard. The spotless hammer, huh? I wonder. Is that important? Now it's the what blue tarp. They were murdered with the blue tarp. Was it Justice Well, like the other three. two options are ones you haven't Maybe already Justice used. Justice Hammer 4. Well, what if there's one thing we have to figure out? How was the culprit able to move around so freely with the weapon? How did nobody witness them carrying it? Sounds like a Justice Hammer 5 is about to make its appearance! Check out MurderGear.com slash HammerTime for more info! Okay, yeah, I love her. <laughs> one thing seems pretty clear. The murder weapon had to be one of the Justice Hammers! You got that wrong! No, that's wrong! Damn, I wish you'd gone again, because I didn't wasn't catch the URL that... No, it was something oh. completely Jack different. said. Sorry. Was it murdergear.info? I thought it was. I don't know. It's fine. It was something like that, and I think it had a slash. I'm, I'm not sure. But... It was slash hammer from it. A different weapon? Specifically, a hammer from the repository. The killer could have easily used that to kill Hifumi. Now, all the hammers in the repository were covered in flecks of grit and debris. But for some reason, one of them had been scrubbed clean. Huh? And the reason it had been scrubbed clean was most likely because it was used to commit murder. If the hammer got covered in Hifumi's blood, of course they'd have to clean it off. I'd also like to point out that the repository has all kinds of hammers. Big ones, small ones, and even some flat mallet-like ones. I think whoever made the Justice Hammers used those as a basis for their design. If that's true, that would explain the Monokuma Files' note about the wounds being similar. So Hifumi moved Taka's body to the repository, where someone then used a hammer to kill him. And whoever did that is the true killer. The one Hifumi was working with. And the one who betrayed him. Hold on a moment. I still think it's strange to assume someone was working together with him. The way the graduation rule works, there is no benefit to helping someone else carry out a murder. So, Cass, I'm not sure if I asked you before. What happens if two people Hello. kill different people? Um, you did like ask same that. Time. And did I? I actually found out the answer. But what? it's only ever mentioned in V3. So, I don't know okay. if you want me to tell you. Do you think it's a major spoiler, or do you think it's something that might just get me to stop thinking about it? I think I actually told you the answer. Because I think I didn't find out about it. It's the first one. The first death is the one that the trial will be about. The second okay. one doesn't matter. I'm just curious what would happen if two people committed murder at the same time. So the idea that same exact time. I don't like fucking know, bro. Don't fucking know. About this, did we not? Monokuma would probably go, like, by second. At just imagine, point, like, it'd be crossbows. it very hard to do it at the same second. I'm just imagining crossbows and two people just pull the triggers at the same time. Yeah, I think that's very, very unlikely. Okay, let's do this. Oh man, Gabe! Is mm -hmm. looking a little bit weird with those bullets you got? More than one person yeah. complicit in the murder. Only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. 
that is how the rule was explained to us. But that only really applies if there's one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. However, there were two murders. Based on the rule, even if more than one person is but only the one who actually carried out the act can be assuming the rule holds true. It is I wasn't holding that down, but okay, thanks, controller. This thing's going out. I'm trying to use the two murders on the impossible one, but my button keeps getting stuck down. Yeah, you made me the controller, my guy. Yeah. Or just use your keyboard. My keyboard's super loud, so it's terrible for recording. You got that wrong! I mean, Kyoko said something, really so use her as evidence. Keyboard. You hmm? may lose there your mouse for this game. It's at least really possible that more than one person was involved. What do you mean? If there'd only been one murder, then yes, the idea of an accomplice isn't really worth considering. Naturally, if only one person can be saved per murder, an accomplice has no risk versus reward benefit. Risk versus reward benefit? The payoff for working together. The reward that balances out the risk of taking part in the scheme. There's no point in being someone's accomplice if there's no benefit to you. However, if there were some potential mutual like reward, like if you're an elf risk, and you get a level for helping them beat it. Possible. Yes. <sighs> Sorry, we've played too much Munchkin. I mean, mind you, you could just be a cleric and win the game through a Ren card. Uh, fuck off, Gabe. <laughs> You're saying that two people could act as each other's accomplices to commit two separate murders. I think that's what the true killer told Hifumi. They would each have an accomplice for their crime, and based on the case's events, Hifumi would have been the first one to act, murdering Taka. They made him carry out the first murder so he couldn't back out of helping them later on. So in this case, there wasn't one single person committing multiple murders. Instead, each person killed someone, creating two separate incidents. And it only looked like one person because that's how the true killer designed it to look. A single suspicious individual, a similar weapon used in each crime, disappearing bodies. By creating one seamless set of circumstances, they made it look like one person was behind it all. The mastermind picked their target and managed to convince him to go along with their plan. And then, to avoid the no accomplices rule, they simply killed their accomplice. Which, if true, means that betraying Hifumi was part of the plan from the very beginning. Th that's just awful! How could anyone be so cruel? You think so? I can't help but admire its cunning. Still, their choice of accomplice seems... odd. The effort made to convince us the two murders were the same. That was the same. That was the main characteristic this time. Kyoka must have noticed that fact from the very beginning, which is why she said not to look at these series of connected events, but entirely separate incidents. Kyoka really is amazing, although when you think about it, she's almost too amazing. Like it's almost unnatural how good she is at I this. I understand how an accomplice could be involved, but then who was the one pulling Hifumi's strings? That's problem numero uno right now. The true killer manipulated Fumi to carry out a number of actions, and the end murdered him. If, in the debates up till now, the way the case is unfolded, when you consider all that, there's really only one person seems to fit. It's Makoto Nagi. No, oh, it's obviously Kiyotaki no, it's himself. Actually, no, it's uh, Sayaka. She's been yeah. alive this whole time. Yeah. Just like we're, yours. We're not hero. Let's not disgrace ourselves. Yeah. Celeste, Here's it's you. Answer. I called this from the beginning. Ah, so I'm the suspicious individual now, am I? <laughs> I really do hate this kind of joke. A joke? I wonder. So what you are saying, then, is that I specifically chose to work together with Hifumi. The idea that I would choose to spend any amount of time interacting with him, that I would go within ten feet of that shit from brain fat, lazy, worthless, goddamn idiot! Wow, that voice just changed. Uh, hmm. uh, 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 just to be clear, there is evidence to support it. Is that so? It is. Throughout the investigation, there was certain behavior that was common only to the two of you. 
You're the only ones who've seen justice. Considering what we've learned so Robo far, justice, it whatever. only further proves that the two of you were working together. A gun! The behavior they had in common has to do with the suspicious individual in the suit, doesn't it? The only ones who ever actually saw Robo Justice firsthand were Celeste and Hifumi. Shush, the adults are talking now. Sorry. Use a As cup. he said, only Celeste and Hifumi ever laid eyes on the costumed Cut individual. Cut that bitch. If we accept that Hifumi was one of the culprits, we can't help but suspect what Celeste has said as well. Are you saying everything they told us was a lie? After taking Hifumi to the nurse's office, we all began our search for this individual, correct? And not too long after that, do you remember what Celeste said? We headed to the second floor specifically because of what she claimed to have seen. Next, to draw us all to the physics lab up on the third floor, she let out a blood-curdling scream. And when we'd all come to see what was wrong, what was it she said? Once she'd done her job of getting us all up to the physics lab, it was time for her partner to get to work. It was to get us to divide into two groups, so that we would discover both bodies at the same time? In fact, Celeste was precisely the one who proposed that we split up. Well, if Celeste and Hifumi were working together, all those chance events suddenly become connected. And on top of that, that piercing cry of yours early on. That was to signal Hifumi, wasn't it? It was your way of telling him, we're on the third floor, everything's going according to plan. Why else would you let out a scream that could have carried across the sea? I just realized another strange thing. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, who we now know was only pretending to be dead, Celeste, you were the first one to say he'd been murdered. You wanted to make sure we wouldn't have any doubt in our minds. I... I don't believe it! Everything... the whole thing was one big act! Almost like Celeste's entire life was a whole big act. Tina, you were with Celeste mm -hmm. when Hifumi's body disappeared, right? At least it wasn't a joke like mine. <laughs> Ouch! The sad part is that's what went through my head too! <laughs> 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 oh, we've been friends too long. Yeah. yeah. I was feeling kind of sick, so Celeste took me to the bathroom. Wait! The pressure machine go was... room. She wasn't worried about you. She just saw a chance to help Hifumi sneak out of the nurse's office. Each piece isn't much by itself, but start putting them together and the picture gets very ugly indeed. Wouldn't you agree? You think Celeste? you sound so fucking cool. I have cool. no idea what you mean. You don't. Don't bother trying to deny it. You made one fatal mistake. Oh, did I? I didn't even catch it myself when you first said it, but looking back, I can, can say we just that vote that wrong and get Biaki killed? At least doing. I'll kill everybody else. Just kill Biaki, please. <laughs> please. We get the added no. bonus of killing Hagakure. No. I, I refuse that because then Celeste would get away with it and honestly she's trying to play us like a fool. After we hung out with her yeah. she got us up to C rank. She got us up to C rank and yet this is how she treats us. Do you think I'm going to stand for that? What yeah. are you talking about? I'm talking you can about sit what down you said that after helps. Hifumi's body disappeared and we returned to the nurse's office. They must be really enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of staying around frightened and confused. We're all gonna die here. We're gonna die just like those guys died. I remember her saying that too, but I don't understand what's so strange about it. 
then pay attention. Sakura, Toko, and I What's so strange to about it, body in the equipment room. Quirrell. Then Makoto showed up and told us Hifumi had been killed. So Sakura and I left with Makoto. Once we were in the hall, we ran into Celeste, and the four of us headed to the nurse's office. Now, the entire time we were together, none of us said anything about Taka being dead. Yeah, this is some pancake level BS. Think about it. Celeste's comment so doesn't make sense. It was completely out of place. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Although I don't so really what? get what it means. Pancakes. Some delicious, mm. delicious pancakes. You hear what that, Celeste? Everyone's about? having some trouble understanding. Could you repeat what you said? If you're really not the culprit, you shouldn't have any problem repeating it, right? Excess call. Yeah, okay. What is he alluding to? The fact that, uh, you know, she said multiple people are dead without knowing multiple people were dead. It's really obvious. Literally last chapter, we just keep getting the murderer to accidentally fuck up oh, and say something that proves they're the murderer. We must really be enjoying enjoying the size this of blue us sports jacket last one. Tracksuit. Positively elated. Now it's we are all guys going to die here. We are going to die. Just like those guys died. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. It's obvious what was so strange about Celeste's comment. You're almost there. I guess I'll reverse it. So strange onto that. All I said was... They must really be enjoying the sight of us. They must be... We are all going to... We are going to die. And that is... And that's all it takes to... What was so strange about Celeste's comment? I just keep taking other people's argument and using it like I'm doing anything. It's not really a spoiler, but in the second game, they add a new mechanic where you can agree with people. That's kind of cool. No, I, I didn't hold it down. And that's all it takes to what was so strange about Celeste's comment. There. Come on, controller. You can do this. You can get to the fourth page and let me do this. Standing around, they must be positively. We are all going to like die. Here. We are going to die, just like those guys. No, got that wrong. I mean, you actually said it correct. You got that right. That's right. Huh? There's no reason Celeste should have said, "Just like those guys die." When she said that, none of us had told her Taka was dead. Exactly. And we didn't run into her until after we were all out in the hall. So there was never any chance for her to have seen his body in the equipment room for herself. So how did you know, Celeste? How did you know more than one person had been killed? And how did you know they were both guys? Because Kyoko had also disappeared, right? So she could have been dead too. I mean, I would say generally those guys is a gender neutral term. The problem is that this was originally Japanese and they don't use gender neutral. I guess. Yeah, that's the I guess the issue. that makes sense. But in English, it doesn't really make such sense. Vivid but I guess that's why the first trial is harder in Japanese. Although why Sayaka wrote Leon's name in English is questionable in and of itself. Because it's baseball and that's obviously American. Probably not played all over Japan. Then what about the picture I took... The picture of Robo Justice. This picture of the costumed villain dragging Hifumi away. We've already confirmed that it literally. <sighs> it, it has to be some kind of setup, right? So let's put yeah. the suit on, and then, then she used the camera's timer to, to set up the picture. There's no timer, probably, and also it's you in there. You're literally just propped up with Hifumi holding you in place. You Easy. You are the only one who could have possibly fit into that suit. Plus, I happen to know that this particular camera does not have a timer. In other words, it is an unassailable fact that this is a picture of Hifumi being dragged away. If everything I told you was a lie, how can this picture exist? Simple. Are we sure that's really a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away? What could you possibly mean by that? Hifumi's the... Surely there are other explanations than the one you've offered up. No, there is no other explanation. 
Yeah, this is a really weak argument this far in. This should have been like a really early on argument. <laughs> I've been drinking. Hey, Fumi's drinking this movie. They're dancing! They're doing the mamba. I got it! It's not a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away. I would say it's a picture of Hifumi dragging the suspect away. That's certainly within the realm of possibility. The one being dragged off in that picture isn't Hifumi, but the person in the robot suit. We've simply been led to believe that it's the other way around. And the strange costume might only exist to lead us astray even farther. If you saw someone wearing something like that in this situation, of course you'd notice and be suspicious. That's what happened! You put me to sleep and made me out to be the bad guy in all this! <laughs> Such a thing is utterly impossible. Hifumi was dragging him away? Ridiculous, is it? I don't think it's ridiculous at all. Then shut your mouth and allow me to educate you. Celeste, you just keep digging your hole deeper. You dressed me up in that suit after I passed out. Then you just draped me across Hifumi and had him carry my weight. You tried to make me look like the bad guy. Like I said, ridiculous. As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly upright. If the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way they could stand up straight like that. I did. Then the fortune telling idiot yeah, cool. is the culprit after all. No way! You dressed me up in that suit ever. Then you just draped me across the Fumi and had him carry my weight. Just you tried to make me look like the bad guy. Like I said. Let me check this. Okay. The final thing I need to know. As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly upright. If the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way they could stand up straight like that. I'm not the sure which one's supposed to be. I guess it'd be the costume on that one then. Try that. You dressed me up in that. Then you just me. You tried to make me look like. Like I said, as you can see in the picture, if the person inside the suit, there's no way they could stand up straight. You got that wrong. No, that's wrong. You can't bend at the waist. I didn't realize I had costume. I thought I only had the blueprint no. on the truth bolt Even section. Even if the person inside the suit were yeah. unconscious, they could still stand mm -hmm. up like that because that Robo Justice suit had a certain characteristic. That's right. They totally made a mistake when they made it, so it couldn't bend at the waist. I'm not so sure that was a mistake. I think the suit was designed from the beginning to be used the way it was. <laughs> Celeste and Hifumi took the suit they'd specially designed and stuffed Hiro into it. That's how they were able to fake that whole thing. The point of it all was to make us believe whoever was in the suit was to blame. <laughs> well then, I suppose this is checkmate. Checkmate? <laughs> Don't make me laugh, you idiot! What do you mean, checkmate? S Celeste? Clearly! You want to cram me into your little guilty box? Well, there's one little problem. Have you already forgotten what Hifumi told us as he lay dying? Who had attacked him? His answer was quite clear, was it not? He said, and I quote, Yasuhiro. In other words, Yasuhiro Hadaku! 
Great! But my name isn't really Yasuhiro. It's actually Taro. What? Your confusing statements don't make any sense. You're only making things more complicated. Is, is, is that a real thing? He did say Yasuhiro. Is he bullshitting? Remember? But are Gonna we be sure real he was really pointing the remember. finger at Hiro? What the hell are you talking about? I'll burn you alive! Kyoko, what do you mean by that? Think back to how Hifumi used to talk to us. How did he refer to each of us? I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember. I don't remember, Cass. At all. Okay, well, did he ever say for serious? Ever. I don't think so, which is why I'm going between these two. No. Um. It's the top one, Dave. Okay. I'm just helping you out with that one. Yeah, I don't remember. It's months since I've heard He would call speak. us Mr. Nagy our and last names. Blah, blah. I mean, it he hasn't been. We played like two weeks ago. Names. Exactly. I know I heard him say Mr. Nagy more than once, for example. So if Hifumi did mean to say Hiro's name, he would have said his last name, Hagakure. I'm sure it was just incidental. By chance, he just... his first name. Indecent? Don't talk. Random chance. Now isn't that a convenient explanation? No. There's no reason to think he would have said the name any different than normal. But he must have run out of energy before he could say any more. So Hifumi was trying to tell us the last name of whoever killed him? But the name he said doesn't apply to anyone here. Well, no. Hold on. There's one person it could apply to, and that's Celeste. She never actually told us what her real name is. <sighs> what did you just say? To think you'd take your false accusation so far, I don't know whether to laugh or spit. Come on! Enough with your idiotic blather. Yasuhiro is a loser's name. Do I look like a loser to you? Well... Do I? What? I think I've earned the right to be a little on edge. Okay, then fill us in. What's your real name? Taro? Make sure your ear holes are wide open. My real name is Celestia Ludenberg. Could you please stop making me repeat myself over and over again? Hey, do you mind showing us your e-handbook? So that still won't give up, so then we have to do something to make her accept it. Do you know how many times I've done that meme where it's the black guy and he's like pursing his lips looking off to the side? E handbook. I've done that See, meme on there. so many times. Mm hmm. I believe it. The Fumi was trying to tell us something. He wanted us to know the killer's last name Yasuhiro. If there's one person here who might have that last name... It would have to be you, Celeste. You haven't told anyone what your real name is. How many times do I have to tell you? My name is... Celestia Ludenberg! God damn it! <laughs> so How long do you plan to go on pretending? I'm not pretending. It's the truth and I just realized you something. no way to contradict me. What? That's the only truth there is! More. Just a second, once we get back to, uh, uh, Byakugan's statement. Read the purple text, the white noise. How long do you plan to go on pretending? I love it when Master yells at people. I'm not pretending. Yeah. It's the truth. <sighs> Jack, though. No yeah. You got that wrong. That's it! The handbook! What?! Anytime you turn your handbook on, it shows the owner's name when it boots up, right? Monokuma told us all about it before. Absolutely vital to a healthy school. Why so don't lose it? When you start it up, it will display your name. Always make sure you have the, have the right one. Now, this is not your everyday notebook. It has some more uses. The so all we have to do is check her handbook, and that'll clear up everything. That's how we can find out Celeste's real name. That, that's an invasion of privacy. I, I refuse to cooperate. 
Celeste, can you please just tell us what really happened? Please, just tell us. Even when I'm put in check, it's just my nature not to give up. Because, 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 because! Because you're wise. Until the game's over, you never know what might happen! Fine then. Let me settle it. Let me go over the case again, from the beginning, and shed light on all your crimes. And that'll bring everything to an end. Hey, do you like comic books? I like comic books. Let's let's make a comic book. For the umpteenth time. Hey, look! Oh, well, yeah. Hold on, look! We're yeah. gonna throw Hagakure's crystal ball again. Damn, we did not get much time with the Super Saiyan talk. No, and that makes me very sad. Is you! Before anything, the killer persuaded someone to help carry out the murder. And that person was... Ifumi. With an accomplice, the killer was able to execute a number of otherwise impossible schemes. First, they convinced someone to meet them in the rec room last night at one in the morning. That someone they met with was Hiro. The murderous duo intended to pass Hiro off as the prime suspect. So when they met up with him, they drugged him, knocked him out, and stuffed him into the Robo Justice suit. Next, Ifumi positioned himself to make it look like Robo Justice was attacking him, while the killer used a digital camera to take pictures of the assault. They did all this just to create evidence that would put the suspicion on Hiro. When they were done with him, they shoved him, still unconscious, into the pool room locker. And then finally, at 6 a.m., they moved into the murder phase of their plan. They called Taka to the equipment room. And that's where Hifumi killed him, making it the scene of the first murder. The murder weapon was Justice Hammer 4, which was left there in the equipment room. The reason Hammer Number 4 was used was to create confusion about the order of the crimes. So, next they falsified two more assault incidents. For these attacks, the killers pretended to be the victims to solidify Robo Justice as the suspect. The first fake incident was the attack in the rec room. There, the killers wanted us to see Justice Hammer 1 and the Robo Justice pictures they'd taken. They wanted to make sure we bought the surprise attack store. The second fake incident was the attack in the library. This time, they planted Justice Hammer 2 and an injured Hifumi to sell us that story. With these two incidents, the killers were able to create a certain preconception in our minds that the suspect was increasing the size of the hammers and attacking people in order as they did. We fell right into their trap and started looking for the suspect based on that. But... No. So it wasn't Kuya? No. Oh, it's two. It's two, because he was hit with two the first time. The killer is you! So, next they for these attacks, the first there, the killers, they wanted to make a sec this time with these two ints that the suspect, he fell right. While we did that, he left Hifumi alone in the nurse's office. This was exactly what Hifumi was hoping for. He took a blood packet from the refrigerator and Justice Hammer 3 and turned the room into a crime scene in which he himself had apparently been brutally murdered. He let out a scream to draw us back. And when we returned, that's what we found. Meanwhile, the other group that had been out searching found Taka's body at the same time. 
So when we heard the body discovery announcement, we naturally assumed it was for Hifumi. We left the nurse's office, and Hifumi once again took advantage of the situation. He simply got up and made his escape. When we learned his body had disappeared, we all rushed back to the nurse's office. And once again, Hifumi had the chance he was waiting for. This time, he snuck into the equipment room. He wrapped Taka's body in a tarp and used the dolly to move it all the way down to the repository. That explains how each of the bodies disappeared. But even Hifumi didn't know what the true killer had in mind for their final act. Their plan all along was to kill Hifumi and get rid of the one person who could betray them. And they did it using an ordinary, everyday hammer from the repository. That should cover everything that happened in this case. And the villain behind it all is... Me. I'm evil. Celeste, sorry, you lose. I lost? I lost? When was the last time I was forced to utter such words? They hang heavy around my neck. Then you admit it? You're the killer? <laughs> Listen to you, trying to take charge. As if you're my private instructor. So this I, is the first actual so trial where a girl is the murderer. Actually, no. To be fair, the first trial was almost. Taiko, almost. Yes, hero is fine. Taiko? So, you finally accepted it. I'm the kind of person, once I've lost, I don't like things to drag on. Interesting. Really bad during one of those where I failed. Cool. Woo! Yeah, 111.